إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونستعينه ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه عباد الله أوصيكم ونفس المقصرة أولا بتقوى الله فاتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم أما بعد All praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most gracious and the most merciful and the best of his peace and blessing shall be bestowed upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon those that follow his footsteps. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith Bu'ifa bin al-Albani but the meaning of it is very important meaning. He said or it was narrated that he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ لَمْ يَهْتَمْ بِأُمُورِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَلَيْسَ مِنْهُمْ 
those that do not care about the affairs of Muslims are not part of them or he or she is not part of them so focusing on the affairs of Muslims caring for your fellow Muslims for your brothers and sisters is part of your belonging to this Ummah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us إنما المؤمنون إخوة المؤمنون are nothing but brothers and sisters so you can imagine if you apply this concept to your brothers and sisters in Islam what you know about how you care for your brothers and sisters your siblings in blood same thing in Islam so part of this care is to always at least in its minimum to talk about what our brothers and sisters are suffering or dealing with across the globe nothing hidden but unfortunately it's also not presented properly to suit the atrocities and the crime committed against our brothers and sisters globally we've seen it here at home we hear about it frequently outside and the most recent ones are the events in in India where our Muslim brothers and sisters are being displaced murdered abused and again nobody is doing anything about it but the interesting part is the Prime Minister of India in a meeting with Joe Biden the president of USA he spoke about the message of nonviolence respect tolerance and in his speech in the United Nations he said the world faces the great the threat of regression uh, regressive thinking and extremism so you would see some officials presidents prime ministers talking about nonviolence approach talking about tolerance talking about inclusivity and raising the flags against extremism however they are practicing extremism at in their own countries in the ugliest ways that we could think of an image that we also that it's difficult to forget the image of our brother Rahmatullah who came in confrontation with heavily armed policemen and they shot him point blank. He was defending his right to his existence, his right to his place. Uh, to his home, to his house, to his village, and then he gets shot, murdered in cold blood. And it didn't stop there. We also saw the image of the Hindu photographer Vijay Banya, who actually jumped. on the body of our brother after he was shot dead in a scene that shows nothing but bigotry hatred and hypocrisy on the level of the government the Indian government 
And when you think about all these atrocities where all the governments that are attacking Muslims in their own land, that these are citizens of their own land, and when we talk about our brothers and sisters in India, these are not foreigners. These are not foreigners. They are people of the land that shows Islam as a religion. When they're treated with such hatred and bigotry under the claim of the threat of Islam, claiming that Muslims are the biggest threat, why do they keep using this term? Same term used in France, same term used in Myanmar, same term used in Canada with Stephen Harper, same term used in the US, Europe. What's the threat? The funny part is, in an article by the Times Magazine, they explain it really well and they say, before Moody took over in 2014, most citizens thought their chief concerns were poverty, insufficient economic growth, and corruption. So before that extremist party was elected in India, what, do, what did the Indian people want? They want to improve their life. They were not thinking about the threat of Muslims. They were thinking about poverty, economic growth, corruption. What happened when Modi's government got to power? He got to power by promising to fix all the real problems. Real problems that people are suffering from. But what happened when they failed to fix their problems? But as the economy has continued to worsen and the unemployment and poverty have risen under him, the BJP has increasingly fallen back on supremacist politics. Why do they become extremists as governments? Because they fail to do their work. Because they're losers. Because they don't know how to serve their countries. They don't know how to improve the condition of their people. They turn to the weak. And all of a sudden, we got a bigger problem which is called Islam and Muslims. This is what they do all the time. It's the exact same story that we are sick and tired of. To deflect attention and evade responsibility. So now, to distract their people, all of a sudden it's about Islam. And why are they doing this? To keep winning elections. For them to keep willing elections, it needs to keep polarizing Hindu voters against Muslims and spinning ever more outrageous campaigns to demonize Muslims. So this is the story, my dear brothers and sisters. Every time an extremist party make it to the government, they fail to do what they're supposed to do. They create this monster called Muslim threat they start provoking all the extremists to focus on Muslims as a threat. Same story. <coughs> Same story was played in Canada. Same story was played in France. And still played in France. They're closing off Masajid in France. Is it really because Muslims are a threat? No, because they are losers. You need to know this. Your children need to know this. But it's because also Muslims are weak. They're always paying the price for the losers. They're not able to manage their affairs. They come and they attack Muslims. Well, they need to know, and this is not for those losers that are claiming to be officials and politicians. This next message is for the reasonable people of India or France, or wherever they are that are being fooled by the message of the losers. <coughs> they need to know that Islam is not a threat. And Muslims are not a threat. 
They need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have dignified all humans irrespect of their race or color or religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Isra, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ Allah have dignified, Allah has dignified all humans irrespective of where they come from. So how does a Muslim view people of other religion? Dignity, respect, because Allah, his creator, his Lord, in his book of guidance told him to respect. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his last sermon, had instructed al muslimin saying, أيها الناس, إن دماءكم وأعراضكم حرام عليكم إلى أن تلقوا ربكم. Your bloods and your properties are haram, are sacred, are forbidden. Muslims are not allowed to attack or kill or murder. Instructed by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the same sermon, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ رَبَّكُمْ وَاحِدٌ وَأَبَاكُمْ وَاحِدٌ كُلُّكُمْ لِآدَمْ وَآدَمُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم وليس لعربي على عجمي فضل إلا بالتقوى ألا هل بلغت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم instructed Muslims not to be racist and not to have prejudice against any people if you're saying Islam is a threat this is Islam this is what Islam is saying where did you come up with the idea that Islam is a threat? Enough lying, enough hypocrisy. You're using your own ideas to cover up your own failure. <laughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. To those tyrants, to those losers that claim to be presidents and prime ministers and politicians, to those that are using the politics of division, to those that are trying to create an enemy to hide their failures, We tell them enough is enough. The game is old. It is better for you to serve your nations and your people. We also tell them that this tactic is not new. This tactic is not new. This tactic has been played for thousands of years. By the same tyrants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us about those losers. And one of the most important stories in the Holy Quran, Qissat Fir'aun, Fir'aun Musa. Story of Musa alayhi wa ala rasulullah and the tyrant of his time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Qasas informed us that in Fir'aun ala fil ard wa ja'ala ahlaha shia. Fir'aun, for the sake of al ulu fil ard, what did he want? He wanted ulu, he wanted sulta. He wanted authority. This is exactly what Macron wants. This is exactly what Moody wants. This is exactly what Harper wanted. They're doing all what they're doing for al ulu. And nobody can convince us otherwise because they could have improved the condition of their people and not resort to violence and extremism. So number one, what does Fir'aun want? Or all these Fara'ina think about it. They want ulu fil, fil ard. They want a sulta wa rif'a. They want to be the, the icons based on hypocrisy. وَجَعَلَ أَهْلَهَا شِيَعًا 
What's the best way to do it if you don't want to really serve the people? If you want to be corrupted? What's the best way to do it? Divide people. In the Holy Quran. Divide them. Say this group is no good. You guys are good. This group is no good. Demonize. And who would you demonize? You need to pick on the weakest group. You're not going to pick on the ones with, you know, uh, 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 wealth and authority. You pick on the weak ones. وَجَعَلَ أَهْلَهَا شِيَعَ يَسْتَضْعِفُ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ So who do you pick on? الضعيف, the weak. Demonize them. Make him, make him look like a threat to the country. Exact same thing. يَسْتَضْعِفُ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ يُذَبِّحُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَيَسْتَحِيِّ نِسَاءَهُمْ Not only pick on them as weaks and make them enemies, commit murders. Exact same thing. We see it in India now, it happened 5,000 years ago with Fir'aun. Same Fara'ina. إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Because they are corrupted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, these people that do this, they're, they're corrupt themselves and they want to corrupt their nation so they may stay in power. But here is the final message to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here is what console us as Muslims, knowing that this corruption will not last. Yes, it's difficult to see our brothers and sisters are being murdered. It's difficult to watch all these images. But here is the hope for you, ya Muslim. وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Those that are weak, being abused, being murdered, don't worry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَمُنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a gift. Al-man here is a gift. A gift that you did not earn. You did not earn by just believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing He's going to help you in your weakness, Allah will give you a gift. What is this gift? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you leaders. Don't worry. It's a cycle, my dear brothers and sisters. Wallahi, you need to know this. And we need to end on this positive note. It's a cycle. Muslims, Indian Muslims, ruled India for 600 to 800 years. And they allowed everybody to live peacefully. And if it was otherwise, they would have wiped off all other religions. But they didn't. They lived. They coexisted with everyone. But they were dignified and strong. Now they're weak. Same thing globally. It's a cycle. You will be made a imma fil ard. Because it's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll become leaders. You'll become strong. You'll become successful. Don't give up. Don't despair. Don't say, Wallahi, it's over. Khalas, we're gone. You will become leaders. الوارثين, you will inherit the safety and the peace and the prosperity. And you will have authority. Promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَمَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ And Fir'aun and all the Fara'ina, they will see, they will fear what they, they will meet what they have feared. What did they fear? They feared loss of power. They shall meet loss of power. They will lose their power and they will be thrown away in the garbage of history like we say it in Arabic and nobody will hear about them after but those that are mustad'afun, the weak ones don't despair know that what we see around us is a cycle it's not going to end and inshallah the time of dignity and prosperity for the weak ones will come and will come very soon we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our heart 
with hope and iman and belief in his promises. Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his love and the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and protect our deen and protect our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the right path and help us follow it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the wisdom and the knowledge of Islam and help us be always as he wants us to be. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-affa wal-afiyata fi dunya wal-akhira. Allahumma ansur ikhwan al-mustad'afeen fi kulli biqa'a al-ard. Allahumma ansur ikhwan al-mustad'afeen fi kulli biqa'a al-ard. Allahumma ansur ikhwan al-mustad'afeen fi kulli biqa'a al-ard. Allahumma alaka bil-tawagheet wal-jababira. Allahumma ahsahim adada wa qtilhum bidada wa la tughadir minhum ahada. Allahumma alayka bihim fa innahum la ya'jizunak. اللهم إن أسألك العفة والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم عافنا في ديننا اللهم عافنا في دنيانا اللهم استر عوراتنا وآمن روعاتنا واحفظنا من بين يدينا ومن خلفنا وعن يميننا وعن شمائلنا ومن فوقنا ونعود بعظمتك أن نختال من تحتنا إنك على كل شيء قدير إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأنت يا أخي أقم الصلاة <تصفيق> <تصفيق> حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى للصلاة يا رحمة الله ورحمة الله استوى لتختلف وأثابني وثابكم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين طاسيم تلك آيات الكتاب المبين نتلو عليك من نبأ موسى وفرعون بالحق لقوم يؤمنون إن فرعون على في الأرض وجعل أهلها شيعا يستضعف طائفة منهم يذبح أبناءهم ويستحي نساءهم إنه كان من المفسدين ونريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Please uh, listen to this announcement Today we are raising funds to support the Quran students who cannot afford their monthly fees Alhamdulillah, uh, Dar al-Qur'an have, mashallah, grown up very uh, uh, steadily and very uh, professionally. And we have more than 1,000 students across Canada and more outside Canada. Uh, it's a beautiful, amazing Qur'an school. I advise everybody to have a look at it. Speak to Brother Hamid Musa at the back. If you have children or you know someone who have children who are and could be interested in learning Qur'an and the, 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 the Aqidah of Islam through a great modern ways. But we also accepted more than 50 students who cannot afford paying the $100 monthly fees, which is 1000 a year. And we hope and look forward to get donations from you towards that uh, 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 cost. So you can, when you sponsor a Quran student, it is inshallah the hasanat that will be gained by that student will come to you as well. And this is a sadaqah jariya for you for your parents, for your family, inshallah, till Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Please donate generously, Jazakumullah Khair, and tell others about this great Jannah project. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.